Another thing you want to look for when you're up in the attic is chases. Chases, it's a bit hard to picture what they are. When the house was originally built, the framing was built around to allow for your vent pipe for your toilet or your chimney or other things that, that the builders knew were coming. So it's often to do with plumbing penetrations, plumbing pipes that have to come up. And what they've done is they built a frame. They built usually a square hole down through the house, leaving space for the plumber or the mason who comes later to build up through that, put the pipe up, put the chimney up. And around that space is usually too much gap, is usually even a foot, maybe even more than a foot. So if you find those chases, you want to make sure they're air sealed so the cold air in the attic isn't going down through your walls into the rest of the house. That'll make a big difference on the energy efficiency of your home. One of the things I wanted to look at was this chimney. We already know that this chimney is used. There's a wood, wood stove down in the basement that's vented through this chimney. And typically, what I'm looking at is typically what you will find. There's a large space up to a foot on this side between the framing of the walls and this chimney, which means the cold up here, which is, this is basically outside, the cold up here filters all the way down through all those walls of the house. That's one thing. Another thing is that this insulation is touching the bricks. Now, obviously the house hasn't caught fire and maybe it never would, but it is a fire risk. It is a fire risk. You don't want paper touching this. This paper, it hasn't burned, but it's a little friable, which means it's been heated. It's been heated to the point where it's starting to lose its, its, its proper texture. So that tells me this could catch fire. The way you're supposed to do it is to have at least a two inch gap between the chimney or if it's an exhaust flue for your uh, furnace, at least a two inch gap between that heat source and anything that's possibly combustible. So in a case like this, you could get some flashing, some thin metal that's usually about this wide and roll that out, cut it, roll it out, seal it with high temperature caulk and make an air seal between up here and this whole big space going down the chimney. So when we're talking about air sealing in the attic, one of the most important things to consider is the top plate. This here, this is the top plate. You can see the drywall, which it makes, forms the ceiling, is just pushed up against the top plate. If you drilled through this, you'd find it was actually three inches because it's a two by four, which is actually one and a half by three and a half. So that's three inches of wood right there. The reason it's important to seal up the top plates is because all the cold air from up here in the attic is able to go down through this crack and go down through the walls. On a windy day, if you notice a lot of wind blowing through your wall sockets or, and light switches on the wall, that's air that's coming down through the top plates into the walls, which makes those walls just conductors of cold. By sealing this, you stop all that airflow. That's why this is so important. If you have no insulation in your attic or you have bat insulation, it's quite easy to do. If you already have some sort of blown insulation or a loose fill insulation, more difficult, but it's still worth your while if you want to do it. You can either use some product like Great Stuff that's an expanding foam, or you can use caulk. It depends on the, um, it depends on the size of the gap, basically. I'm going to use Great Stuff. This is not the very best product out there, but definitely the most commonly available. All hardware stores carry this. So this here 
There's the crack. This is what we're trying to seal. This is where the drywall ceiling butts up against the wall. There's your top plate. There's your drywall on both sides. And we're going to seal that crack. That's how we stop the air from flowing down into your wall cavity. In a case like this, we have cross pieces going. It doesn't hurt to seal up these edges too because you're not able to seal that crack that's going this way. So by sealing here, you eliminate that issue. This is just a little area of the top plate. Of course, if you understand that the top plate is the top of all your walls, that's a lot of walls, it's a lot of top plates but it's worth your while to go through the whole attic or as much attic as you can access and seal them up. So another air sealing issue you want to consider when you're up in the attic is recessed lights. A lot of houses have recessed lights. They're a very pleasant, pretty thing to have in the house, but in terms of air sealing and in terms of insulating, they're not that good. So the recessed light in your ceiling from your house will be recessed, right? It'll be just a whole and the, the light is up higher than the, than the ceiling. What that means is the light is actually up here in the attic. And you, if you had them, this, this house doesn't, but if you had them, it would be this box, probably about that high, metal, like that, that's sitting right through the drywall. That's your recessed light. Now, if you take a close look at it, you could find out if it's IC rated. IC means insulation contact. That means it's designed to allow insulation to be touching it. If it's not IC rated, then there's a fire risk with your insulation touching it, and you should make sure that doesn't happen. You want to air seal it to make sure no air is coming through, and you want to insulate around it. Depends on the codes. Every state seems to deal with it a little bit differently, but you can buy pre-made boxes. They're just like cardboard boxes that will fit right over the light and then you seal the edges of the box. Or you can build one out of drywall and cut pieces and make a simple box. You definitely want to insulate around that box. Whether you want to insulate on top of it is a bit of a matter of opinion. So it's probably not a fire risk. What possibly could happen is because of the heat from that light moisture builds up in there and because you're insulated on top moisture builds up and you'll end up with moisture damage on your ceiling that's the risk mm -hmm.